Hi folks, I'm Novak and welcome to the Artificer's Guild, the home of all things Artifact. Today I want to go over drafting, what it is, how it works, and most importantly, how to get good at it. Because the drafting process itself is a skill, and doing better here will certainly help you win some more expert runs. First of all, let me quickly explain exactly what draft is. If you already know this, feel free to skip ahead to the juicy tips and draft guide. Draft is a game mode that you might be familiar with from other games. Magic the Gathering has drafts, and Hearthstone has its arena, both of which are similar to Draft and Artifact. In essence, you don't use any of your own cards in a game of draft. Instead, you're given a limited number of random cards from which to build a deck. In Artifact, the only two ways to currently play draft is through casual or expert gauntlets, playing to your first five wins or two losses, or in the tournament systems. If you're interested in some draft tournaments, don't forget the AOC or Artifact Open Circuit being run by us at the Artificers Guild is completely open to anyone that wants to play, and now even cast. So come join us on Discord or follow us on Twitter to get the invite links to those. When you start up a draft, you'll be faced with a full card pack, that being 12 cards with one rare, three uncommons, and the remainder being commons. You then pick two cards from this pack that you might want to add in your deck. Once you've selected them, the rest of these cards will disappear and are sent to someone else who is drafting. You'll then send a different pack with two cards missing, those two cards having been picked by someone else during their own draft. You then choose another two cards that you want from the ten in front of you, and that pack gets sent away again. You repeat this until the final set you are shown is just two cards, at which point you're forced to pick them both. Within the pack you must pick one hero, but you cannot pick two, so if you pick one early, heroes will be unclickable for the rest of that pack. Equally, if you do not pick a hero, you'll get a completely random hero added as one of your final two cards. Once you've finished that pack, you repeat the process four more times, collecting a total of 60 cards, five of which are heroes. You then get sent to the deck builder, where your 60 cards are waiting for you to construct a deck. You can also use any of the basic cards, which means the four basic heroes and the three basic items, to make up the rest of your deck. So you know how draft works, but how do you improve your drafting? The biggest mistake most players make is picking their colours way too early. In the first two entire packs, try not to tie yourself down to any colours. The best way to manage the beginning of your draft is to simply pick the two best cards in every pack. This will then let you transition into the latter half of the draft, knowing exactly where your true value cards lie, and drafting around some strong cards, instead of just drafting around the colour that showed up most early on. But how do you decide what are the best cards? Well, a lot of it will come down to practice, but off the top of your head, you should be looking at cards such as Emissary of the Quorum or Time of Triumph, but for all the other cards, there is no better way of looking at it than Team Liquid's Rob AJG's Heart Method. This is a rough order in which you should pick up cards. The H is for heroes, as they're most sought after cards in the entire draft, so if you see a strong one, pick it up. The E is for exotic or extravagant or something of the sort. Basically these are weird and wonderful rares like Time of Triumph that you definitely want to grab. Next are active cards, ones that let you put pressure on, as draft is a game mode where the proactive typically gain a distinct advantage. That makes the R reactive, and when you can't find a good proactive option, taking a reactive one isn't bad by any stretch. You always need to be able to respond to your enemy. Finally, we have the T for trinkets. Items are the least important, as the basic ones are pretty good themselves. But if you see a strong item that fixed your gold generation, feel free to grab it. For the full explanation, I've linked the article in the description. So, with that out of the way, let's go through a draft together now. Every single one is different, but practice certainly makes perfect. Hi folks, so here we are in my draft, and immediately I can see the first of our letters, H for Hero. Phantom Assassin is definitely one of the best going, and she's a common, so you will see a lot of Phantom Assassin in draft. So I'm going to go and pick Phantom Assassin here. Now looking at the rest of the cards, one thing you want to pay attention to is the rarity, because these are the cards you're not going to see as often. So we're looking for those expensive cards. Now we've got some pretty decent commons, Gank and Tyler Estate are both nice, and like I said... We've got Phantom Assassin, so they're black cards. So you might be tempted to pick those. But remember, we don't want to be locking into our colour too early. So I'm actually going to take at any cost here, because in draft, boards tend to go pretty wide. So if I've got something like at any cost, I can really punish those type of decks. So we've passed that away, and now you see we've got two cards missing. So th those two cards have been taken by someone else already. So we see they've passed us a pack without a hero, so they picked a hero themselves. And again, we're going to pick the two strongest cards in this pack regardless of color and just looking at it i really like smash the defenses and again it's uncommon so it's not going to be appearing as often after this we've got a couple of choices i really like hip fire i'm basically addicted to hip fire and we've got steel strength as well which again uncommon so it's one of those extravagant cards uh, or exotic cards rather but i think i'm going to go with hip fire just because hip fire 
get initiative is so good. This is the sort of proactive we're talking about. So this is one of those times where we've got one exotic, so that's the E of heart. And there's another opportunity to take another E, but I actually don't think this card is as strong. So I'm gonna, gonna go for the next one, which is A, to be active. Now you see, because we've already picked a hero, Skyrath Mage is greyed out. So I actually can't pick him at all. Looking at the rest of the cards and you'll see these are starting to get a little bit less good as we move on. Remote detonation again, like at any cost, can be good if the enemy goes wide, but it prevents you from going wide as well. So I'm actually going to go with Relentless Zombie because getting units on the board is good. And basically the rest of these cards are not top tier. Um, most of them wouldn't see you wouldn't see getting picked up. Uh, Smear or Blacksmith again just because it's another unit, maybe I'll pick that up. Now we're moving into the real dregs, although there's a hip fire. So immediately going for that. Although, so even though T for Trinket is right at the very end, I love both of these cards. Sephiroth Shield is great for putting it on a hero and leaving them in a lane to stall. And Helm of the Dominator is just a fantastic late game item. However, when we look at Trinkets, remember, we've got to look at how much gold we can actually earn. Now at the moment, we've got a Phantom Assassin, so we can definitely get some hero kills. But we haven't really looked at what the rest of our deck is doing. So I think going for a 19 gold item is a bit risky. I'm actually going to go for the Sephiram Shield here. And it's a personal favourite of mine. Uh, and now we're basically looking at very, very easy picks. So Relentless Zombie and Trebuchet, because they're both a lot better than Howling Mind. The symmetrical effect on Howling Mind is, is really not that strong. And then Crystal Maiden's blanked out. And now, see, we've only got two cards. We have to pick them both. Because otherwise we can't continue. And now we move on to our second pack. You see here now, we're on two of five, and we get a Luna. Okay, so immediately picking Luna. She's uncommon. You basically won't see another one of her. Very, very good hero, and H is the beginning of heart. You'll often do this. You'll see a new pack, and even if you see, like, a, like Phantom Assassin, she's a good hero. She's an A-tier hero. Just pick it, honestly. Like, getting an A-tier hero in your first pack is very, very strong. If you haven't yet seen our tier list, it's more meant for constructed, but... It works very well for draft as well, so go take a look at that if you need to know how strong certain heroes are. Now we're looking for our next card. Again, we don't want to lock too much into a particular color, but I'm looking across these and unsupervised artillery is okay if you go wide. So it's it's an exotic card, but it's relatively difficult to pull off. Uh, these green cards are nice. Remess Blessing and Selfish Cleric are both strong. Disciple of Nevermore is very strong and Phase Boots are strong. Um, so this is proactive, or this is active, active, this is reactive, and this is trinket. So I'm going to go for one of the actives, uh, following the rule of heart. Because the exotics we have, unsupervised artillery, like I said, not that good. Spot weakness, I'm not really feeling our red cards. I know I should, said we shouldn't lock into a colour, but you can dip out of a colour early. So I am going to go for the Disciple of Nevermore there. Now, what do we have in front of us here? I really like Rosalie Rejuvenator. We only have one green card so far, but we might end up picking up some. Like, green is very strong in uh, in draft. And then Assassin's Apprentice to be nice and active again. Um, so this is, technically this is both the E and the R of Heart. It is both an exotic, but it's also quite reactive. Like, you need to get that play effect out. Whereas Assassin's Apprentice is great on turn one. If, you're, if the enemy hero is just a couple of hit um, damage rather off of dying, place Assassin's Apprentice alongside of it, directs Assassin's Apprentice into the hero and you get a free kill. So it's a really nice way to set up some tempo for the latest parts of the game. Oh, that's a lot of Arcane Assaults. Get initiative cards are fantastic. We've already got a Luna, so we're probably going to end up putting some blue in our deck. And I played the Vigil's okay. Like I said, Remess Blessing's okay, but none of the rest of this is very good, so... Double Arcane Assault is an easy pick for me. We've got another Sephiroth Shield, but I don't think I'm going to go with it. Trebuchet is okay. We've already got one of those. Sister of the Veil, I don't really see being that strong. 4-5 isn't that much stronger than the 3-2 Assassin's Apprentice. But it does give us another unit, and we are lacking a few of those. So maybe Sister of the Veil and Compel. Again, we're down to the last few. I really don't want any of these cards, so let's just pick the two blue ones. Just in case we need fillers for our deck, right? 
And that's nice to have a relentless zombie on the last one. Next new pack, we've got a Beastmaster here. Now with three packs in, we can start to look at our colours. So we're definitely going blue, and we're definitely going black, right? We might splash one other colour. We could splash red, we've got Smash the Defences, which is nice. We could splash green, because we've got Rose Deep Rejuvenator, which is nice. But we're not committed to either of them yet. So I'm actually going to avoid the Beastmaster, because I see some other really, really strong cards here. So Dimensional Portal, very, very good card for blue. It doesn't really fit into the active or reactive, but it's also not, not really exotic because it's so common. But this card, I guess it can be both active and reactive, and that's why I really like it. You can play it defensively, especially with your Disciple and Nevermore, and you can play it defensively to block. So fantastic card all around. Tyler Estate Sensor, also a very nice card and a bit of an exotic to uh, lock the enemy out of some mana. And eight health is very hard to kill in draft. We see we've got Beastmaster back again. So there's a lot of red here. So what I might do here is, so that we're not locking ourselves out of either color, I'm gonna pick late game cards in both red and green, just in case we come back to them. So now you see we don't have a hero this time. So we're probably gonna end up randoming a hero, but honestly, Debbie, the black basic hero, isn't that bad. And we can add her into our deck later. So probably gonna pick up a gank here. Gank is really nice to have, especially with Phantom Assassin. I kind of like collateral damage, but I'm thinking Trebuchet or Relentless Zombie. We already have three Relentless Zombies, so let's go with the Treb. Obliterating Orb isn't too bad either, just looking at it now, because we don't have any way to kill improvements. And Black Blue isn't that good at killing improvements. So we could consider Obliterating Orb. But I think I'm going to pass on it for now. Book of the Dead is also quite nice to spawn zombies. But I don't know who we'd be putting it on. We don't really have a hero that survives a long time. We could put it on our Luna to keep her up, I guess. But there are better items out there for that. So now you've really got, like you can tell you, we've, we're thinking about our composition. Thinking how the game itself is going to play out. So at the moment, our win condition, if we're just going blue-black, is our Disciple of Nevermore. That's effectively how we're going to end the game. So we need better setup for that, really. Um... Now we've got a Dimensional Portal. I don't feel too bad taking Unsupervised Artillery. We've already got two Arcane Assaults, so I think I'm going to take the better late than ever. We've got three Get Initiative cards now, so I think we're okay. Ravenous Mass this far through. Now, this is a card that people haven't quite decided yet. This could be a very, very good card, because what it effectively allows you to do is move some of your damage from one position to another position. I'm going to take it. It's a bit of a risk, it is exotic, so it's very high up on heart, but people aren't convinced that it's a good card. Call the reserves over Trebuchet, probably, because we've already got one, or we've already got two. Uh, another one might just be overkill, maybe. It's fine to honestly go either way here, and I guess this is where we look at our curve, right? We were already pretty far fine on six. We've got a lot of cards in six already, so I'm going to go with these two. And our random, Darkseer. We're probably not going to be using that Darkseer, unless we end up going into, into green some more. So now we're in 4 out of 5 packs, we're looking at our split. We can splash red or green, so if we see really good cards, we can pick them up. But otherwise, we're going to be looking at black and blue, almost exclusively. Uh, for example, here, Stone Hall Plate not, might not be bad. It's good to get some armor. It's good to get some armor up, just not too much. Uh, and probably Tower Barrage, just to help clear some some creeps out. Like I said, draft ends up going pretty wide almost uh, all the time. Now we do have a black hero, Lion, but Lion's typically not that strong. Debbie is usually better. So let's see if there's anything else we prefer. I definitely prefer Murder Plot and Tower Barrage and Lightning Strike I both like as well. So we're not going to be going for Lion. I think I'm going to go for the Tower Barrage though. So we can focus on controlling the enemy and win through our creeps. And Murder Plot is just a fantastic card. It can really take your enemy uh, by surprise. Okay, so now we've got some nice black and blue options. So Payday, really nice if you think you can generate any sort of gold. And we do have a gank. So it's not unheard of that we'd be getting some money. Of course, we have the Assassin's Apprentice and the Sister of the Veil as well, which can help with killing. So one Payday, I feel like it isn't a bad, a bad include. A lot of gold generation decks don't include don't often include three paydays anyway. Um, 
Buying time is okay, but it's Big Brother Lost in Time is so much better as a lock card. So we're probably going to go with Satan Magician. Now we're looking at this, and a Glody Vandal's an auto pick for me. If I'm ever going for some sort of creep based win, and I'm including black, a Glody Vandal is just perfect value. Four damage to the tower immediately. With the Disciple of Nevermore, he does six damage to tower. Really nice to have. And I might go for an Anwan for me here. It's not a common card I pick up, but we do have the Sephiroth Shield and now a Stonehall Plate. Winter Wyvern on the four. Oh, we're saved, guys. So it's very rare that you'll see a good hero this late on. So instantly picking him. And say to do list in case we splash green. Or to pick these. Red Miss Maul is actually quite nice for us to have. And another Winter Wyvern. So we could pick this here. The only issue I have with that is that I don't like Winter's Curse. So we'd be forced to have six of them. And we'd be going three black heroes then. So we'd be forced to have Jamoy alongside Luna. And I think Jamoy is a lot weaker than Debbie. So if anything, I kind of want to pick up a blue hero in this pack. Also, we've got a lot of good cards in front of us. Another dimensional portal, I'm definitely taking. And I kind of want to take both Slays, but I really want that dimensional portal. So Slay is really, really nice because a lot of late game involves big creeps and you can just kill it with for three mana. So this is actually a very good late game exotic, a te technically reactive card. And there's a Venomancer. So I could pick that up for our blue. It synergizes quite well in terms of spawning creeps. So I think we'll go with that. And we can go for another dimensional portal. I think I kind of like that. But a Glody Vandal is also good here. And Assassin's Apprentice is also good here. There's a lot of good cards in this pack. Uh, do we have that many creeps? Yeah, we've got a decent amount of black creeps. So I'm okay with going for another dimensional portal. To really uh, spam them out. Keenfolk Turret, really nice. Brilliant card to have. And let's go with a Catapult. Probably not going to make the cut in our deck though. Now we can pick up a Book of the Dead. We have avoided doing so earlier. And Assassin Shadow is a nice sort of closing out card. Book of the Dead is nice for Venomancer, of course. Not because it triggers too often, but it's nice to keep him alive so we can keep spawning more things. Uh, call the Reserves here. Probably a Shield of Basilius. Lodestone Demolition just wouldn't make the cut, so Shield just in case. And there's Lost in Time, so we have a lock card if we want. And that's it. There's our draft. So as you see, we focused a lot on picking up heroes as soon as we could. And we didn't bother about colours until we were quite far into the draft. So this would be end up being a blue-black draft. I often quite go... I often go for, for dual colour, but splashing, like I said, we had that splash option throughout the entire time. So if we saw some really killer green and black, uh, green and red cards rather, later on, we could quite easily splash into those. And that about wraps up our draft. I hope you guys feel a lot better about the drafting process. And as always, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the content, feel free to like and subscribe as it really does help the channel out. And I've been Divok of the Artificers Guild, and I'll see you next time.